just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome back to Coffee Time. Today's Coffee Time is a little different because it's really about one topic. But I'm calling it Coffee Time because I got my coffee mug. And question that keeps getting asked, what coffee do you actually drink? This is my favorite coffee, Sorrento. It's my favorite. Pepe Candio has a couple um, lines that are my second favorite. So today's topic, it's because there's things that keep coming up that just kind of crack me up. And it's 10, because it works out to be about 10, might be 12, but we'll call it 10, Colombian quirks. Things that are more or less unique to Colombia, and even a couple that are borrowed, there's aspects to it that's unique to Colombia. But most of these are just homegrown. Call them wives' tales, whatever you want to call it. They're quirky. Number one. Now this applies mostly to women. They don't want to go out in the rain. If it's raining at all, if there's any kind of downpour, or shower, or trickle, they don't want to go out. They can be sitting at work and they'll just sit there until it stops raining. Now fortunately here, when it rains, it doesn't rain for very long, usually. But I've run into this in that, as, as you know, I went through a dating period, which I'm out of now, but I went through a dating period and so people were, were going to meet up and if it was raining, forget it. I mean, it's, it's just not going to, it's not going to happen. But I find that with my friends, if it's raining, it, it's like they don't want to be caught up like the Wizard of Oz witch, I'm melting, you know, it's because they have this idea that if your hair is wet, they're going to get sick. It's just, it's a sure thing. You're going to get sick. And I find this rather ironic. I find this bizarre because if you are sick, let's say you got a cold or the flu, one of the recommendations is to take a cold shower. I mean, how does that work? They have this idea that showers, if they're cold, they're going to toughen you up. And, you know, you can think of the Nordic people where they go out and jump in the ice ocean. And, you know, there may be something to it. I don't know. But then why doesn't it apply if you get a little rain? It's, you know, 78 degrees out and you get a little spritz. But, oh, I can't go. Oh, it'll just toughen you up, right? Carry an umbrella. But it's a thing here. If it's raining, all bets are off. The boogeyman. Now there's boogeymen in all cultures, but there's a bunch of them here. I'm not gonna go through the details. You might wanna look them up. I'm just gonna rush through the ones just in this Candillo area alone. Um, first of all, you have the hat man in black. I'll save you the Spanish, but it's the hat man. He dresses all in black, and in some cases he's got black dogs, he's got a black horse, and he roams the night. And most of these are for warnings that if you do such and such, if you steal, if you're not, if you're not an honest person, he's going to come and sweep you up. If you're cheating on your spouse, and cheating on your spouse is a common one through all of these. El Mohan. You got La Pata Sola. She's, 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 she's a one-legged woman that hops around in the forest. Don't be caught cheating. You got La Llorona. She's the wailing woman. She roams the forest. Whatever the sound is like for a forest roaming monster. I mean, I don't know. But if you're caught cheating, you could end up like her. Then you got Mother Mountain. Now Mother Mountain, she's this, it, usually portrayed as naked, big woman, rotund, Rubenesque, grand woman. Now when I say grand woman, I'm talking about the size of the 10-story building that I'm in. Because 
you know, one of the things they say is if a creek floods, it's because she sat down in it upstream and forced all the water down rapidly. And of course, don't get caught cheating. So it's interesting because these are alive and well. I mean, in Mexico, you got your, uh, you've got your Cupachaba, is it? Cupachabra, I think it is. You know, you have that one. But in Colombia, there's just a, there's a whole ream of them. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, you go back to the Vikings, they had a god for every uh, event. Well, they've got them here, but the thing is, they're all alive and well. You talk to anybody, and they know all about these. Do they really believe in them? Well, a lot of people don't, but a lot of people do. Okay, back on getting sick. Eucalyptus trees are common. Eucalyptus is a cure-all. I remember my ex-wife's mother. I wasn't feeling good one day, and she wanted me to get drink some eucalyptus oil. Eucalyptus is the cure for everything. They are huge believers in it. Put it in a tea, drink it, chew it. Eucalyptus, you're going to be fine. But recently, there's, a, there's one you can add to that list, which is, it's not eucalyptus, but it's camphor, and it's Vicks Vapor Rub. You rub that on, and whatever it is you have, it's going to be taken care of. Uh, they, it's pronounced Viva Peru. Viva Peru. Vicks Vapor Rub, and it's very popular, and it's a cure-all. Now, if you subscribe to my Facebook page, it's a group for people that are visiting Panama or uh, Ecuador or Colombia or whatever. If you're not part of it, join up. Links are below. I posted up a picture, and I mentioned it. Personally, I find it kind of gross. But they just love, me encanta, their hot chocolate with cheese in it. No, I'm serious. Hot chocolate with cheese in it. But what I find even worse than that is they sell homemade ice cream with chunks of cheese in it. They love it. They love it. I've yet to meet a Colombian that doesn't, oh my God. Okay. Now this one is shared by Latin culture in general, but not to the extent of what it is here. Now, just as in Ecuador, I've now developed a lot of friends. There's a lot of people that I know all here. Uh, the only gringos I see are people that come and visit. And I just had two this week. Very nice gentlemen. But I have all these local friends. And I run into this with all of them. Let's say we plan on doing something. Um, I like to cook. And I'm a good cook. And so once in a while it's like I want to cook for, you know, one or two or three friends or something. So we'll set a time. Yeah, come on over. I'm going to make some spaghetti cheap easy and it's way better than anything they're gonna get so we'll set a time we'll say seven o'clock it comes seven o'clock I'll get a message oh I'm on my way I'm almost there okay cool eight o'clock no no I, I, I I'm I'm arrived I, I'm there I'm, I'm okay 8 30 I find out that they're just then getting in the shower to get ready to come. Now, Ecuador had an issue, typically maybe a half an hour. Here, it's literally hours. It's not every time, but it's really, really common. It's really typical. And a person like me drives me crazy drives me absolutely crazy. I tell all my friends, please, just so I don't go crazy, just try to be very specific about what it actually is. Because if I know it's gonna be 8.30, that's fine. But you know, if you're making food, it's time sensitive. You wanna time that to come out at the right time or it just kind of degrades. I go crazy. I mean, I just, it's that, used to have OCD. I don't really anymore, but I have, hints of it and that's one of the things that just starts driving me up a wall so 
be prepared for that. Okay, here's another one. Again, I've only seen this with female. But if you say, oh, right over there, you're going to see, uh, you know, something like that, right? Over here, you see the waterfalls right up there. Okay, how do they do it here? This is typical. If you ask her, where are the waterfalls? She's going to go, where's that dog? point with their lips. It could, it's like a, a selfie sucker lip thing. What do you call it? Pouty lips? Or, they're pointing. And, and it's it cracks me up. Last one I'm going to talk about today is boobies. Okay, boobies. They're everywhere, right? Now, here I've run into so many that one day want to have augmented breasts. And it's kind of bizarre. Why is that? Why is that? Now, Medellin, I can understand because there's a whole thing that goes on there. But in the rest of the country, why is it? It's not every girl, but it's really common. And I've had a number of conversations asking about why is that. And most people haven't even really thought about it. But it's, it's a social thing. It's, it's uh, here's why. I'm not sure, it's got to be something in the water, but an inordinate number of Colombian ladies have naturally full, fairly large, if not large, breasts. I mean, C's and D's abound in Colombia. These are non-augmented. These are just, this is natural. And it's amazing as compared to, I've been to a lot of countries, and I've never seen so many in one place. Nothing like it in Ecuador, uh, nothing like it in Mexico. Not to the extent of what it is here. And the nearest I can figure out is it's just to, to be socially acceptable. If you're a A or a B, oh my God, you're, you're just not like everybody else and you feel deficient. You know, there's this theory, particularly with people that go to Medellin, that it has all to do with catching a man or a sex trade or something like that and again what goes on in Medellin stays in Medellin but in the rest of the country which is very unlike what goes on there it's just a thing and that's and that's what it is and it's kind of sad in a way you know uh, but it's understand I can understand it I don't agree with it I think it's um, I think it's very sad but I think that's why. Now, as to why Colombia is the way it is, I really don't know. There's a couple characteristics that you're going to see, you know, throughout Colombia, and that's full breast and kind of bubble butts. I don't mean huge, but I mean they're definitely there with a shape. And it becomes obvious the longer you're here as compared to other places you've been. And it's not it's not a racial thing because there's such a mixture here I mean 20% are white you've got mestizo you've got black you've got uh, indigenous you've got Nordic you've got everything you can think of is here it really is a melting pot you know you can walk down the streets of Armenia and you'll see a guy six foot four blonde hair blue eyes that was born here and his family was born here it goes back for a long Colombia has been a popular country throughout history. A lot of people emigrated here, and it's like uh, New York City on steroids. I think it's almost even more so, except you don't have your enclaves. You don't have, you know, Chinatowns. It's, a, it's just a blend everywhere. So you can't really point to, well, it's this kind of heritage that, you know, causes that. So I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't know if any of you know, you know, put some comments down. I'm kind of curious about it. But it is an interesting quirk of Colombia. So I hope you enjoyed today my Colombian quirks. I'm going to finish my coffee. Okay, I announced about two weeks ago that I'm back. I explained why I was gone and that I was going to be back into doing the videos. Just because you hadn't seen anything, it's not that I, that's, that was all true. 
I've been busy doing a lot of clips. I've, I went to the south end, I have a couple neighborhoods, I've got video of that. I've got an interview with one of the gringos that came here to visit. I've got a number of videos that I've taken and they have to be edited. They're now in line to be edited. So this is the first one coming out. The next one coming out, I believe, is the interview that I did. The one after that will be one of the South neighborhoods. It, as I've told you before, editing video is very difficult for me. It takes a lot of time. And I'm kind of overwhelmed like I was a couple years ago when I had to take off for about a month and a half and came back and it just took me forever to get the, the ball rolling again. Well, here this video, the ball has started to roll and these videos will start falling every few days. You know, I would say like dominoes, but not that, not that cool. But they're coming and um, still alive. Everything's good, mood's good. So thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you don't contribute, if you get anything out of these, please contribute. And I'll see you soon.